would you describe the Earthshot Prize? The Earthshot Prize, David, is the most prestigious global environmental prize there's ever been. And the plan is to really galvanize and bring together the best minds, the best um, possible solutions um, to fixing and tackling some of the world's greatest environmental challenges. The name Earthshot is a very uh, powerful one. Uh, who invented it? Where did it come from? So we took the idea and the concept from uh, President Kennedy, who in 1961 launched the Moonshot idea, which was to put a man on the moon. Hugely ambitious, and everyone thought at the time, wow, this is a, this is a big deal. And we basically transformed that into the Earthshot, saving Earth and, 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 and really focusing our attention on, on doing really ambitious targets on Earth, much like the same way you put a man on the moon. Well, it's got, it's got a magic to it. Let's hope it has the magic touch and produces some extraordinary example, as successful as the man on the moon has been. It's a Let's great advance, so. yeah. And each year, there will be how many? So we've got five Earth shots for every year for the next 10 years. They are reviving the oceans, restoring and protecting nature, fixing the climates, clean air, and a waste-free world. So in 10 years, there will have been 50 different ideas that are out there doing things for the planet. It's a hugely ambitious target, but I do think the positivity and that finding ways through this is better than saying, you know, it's all doom and gloom, we're all going to, you know, perish. I think, I think we've got to harness our ingenuity and our ability to, to invent some of this out. You won't be doing this entirely by yourself. Who, who's going to help you? So we've got a council, and the council is a, a diverse, broad range of people from all around the world who I've been talking to over the last few weeks and months. We've got a really, really fantastic council together. Naoka, good morning or good evening? Uh, good morning, Prince William. Indra, good afternoon, hello. Very nice to meet you. If I, if I waffle on, just tell me to stop. <laughs> I was hearing and reading it, um, how many boards you're on, Dr. Ngoz. You're a very busy lady. <laughs> I, I imagine you're the last person I need to explain the, the, where Earth shots come from. But what <laughs> motivates you personally to care for the planet and, and want to repair it? Well, it's been more than half a century since human beings reached space and even to the moon. However, the Earth is our only home planet. A person's health and productivity depend on the quality of the air they breathe, on the type of fuel they burn to stay warm, and on the amount of rain they receive. Our quality of life is contingent on our environment. I personally feel that this is my duty as a citizen, as a human being, um, and as a mother of two young children, uh, to bring attention to this issue right now, before it's too late. It's the most important power in the world, so the natural, because if you, if you give good things, the natural gives back good things to you. There's no greater challenge, I don't think, facing us as a species than tackling climate change. Uh, it's a global challenge and I think it's enormous, but I, I really do believe that we human beings are capable of so very much. We have only one Earth in this world. And the pandemic has made it clear that mankind cannot live without the Earth, but the Earth can live without mankind. Indigenous peoples around the world, we are more than uh, about 500 millions living in the forests, savannas, desert, glaciers, mountain. So we do have those knowledges who can help our planet to get restored if they are recognized and if our rights are respected. Absolutely. If we could harness the wisdom and the knowledge of the elder generations all around the world with the energy and the action of the younger generation, then I think we've got something to, to work with, haven't we? We have to stop and ask ourselves, what's the price of progress? I'm not suggesting we shouldn't progress. I think we should progress. How do we do it in a sensible way uh, so that we can align the incentives for growth with the incentives for the planet? I think people know the climate change is very urgent, not only urgent to us, but, it's, but for our children and children's children. People just don't know how to face it and how we can, can do it. Our obligation and responsibility is to leave the planet home better than we found it so that the next generation, no matter where they're born or to whom they are born, can thrive on this planet. I sense an impatience uh, among our young people 
uh, they don't want to see this destruction of the planet. They want, and they're busy trying to find creativity and solutions to it. So that makes me optimistic. No, I couldn't agree more. I think there's a real, there's a real groundswell of young people now, for, you know, with their voices needing to be heard. So if anything, hopefully the Earthshot can do that and project these voices, you know, to a global audience. We have to, we have to have the confidence to make this change. I think about it, no matter how big we change uh, uh, nature already, but in other way, but I believe that with uh, enough uh, uh, desire, I think we, we can do the same to reverse this. I can imagine our grandkids saying, what have you done to our planet? And so I think this is an intergenerational responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. The, the burden we leave behind is, um, is, is pretty severe for future generations. Your children, my children, they have to find ways to reduce carbon emissions, to repair oceans, to clean the air. Um, so we need young minds to be informed and invested. And that's why education is so important. But we can't just stand still. We have to lead the way and we have to do it now. We all live in the same forest that is already on fire. If we work together, we can all do a little bit today and to overcome our challenges. When I saw the International Space Station, I saw that it's a symbol of international collaboration. If we all put our forces together for a common goal, we can make a great achievement. But even though the situation is urgent, it isn't hopeless. When our backs are against the wall, humanity has a knack for coming up with inventive solutions. We need action and we need it right now. We can't wait any longer. And when I saw the prize, I'm like, yes, that's the right thing we need to do. What is so brilliant, I think, about the Earthshot Prize is that it aims to reframe that narrative to one of opportunity and uh, positive action, because of course there are solutions. They're already out there. We just have to um, harness them and reward them. Danny, I, I, need your, I need your leadership. You've captained more teams than I've even been in. And I, I, I'm, I'm best at this, so you need to score because yeah. I'm best at this. <laughs> what the prize does is encourage everyone to, uh, to really think, how are we going to make the seemingly impossible possible? And it lets everyone know the race is on and we're going to win it. I know it's ambitious and I know that there will be so many uh, challenges along the way, but I also know that there will be so many who will rise to the occasion with creative solutions. Um, and those can then be the leaders who will, um, who will inspire others to follow. And I think collective confidence is something quite important, is it? The fact that we all, if we all believe we can do it together, we need that little bit of um, group confidence that pushes us forward and says, yeah, we can do it. That idea of celebrating the creativity and rewarding them by supporting them with this prize is very exciting to me. Thank you for doing this. Well, it's a, it's a team. I, I, I've said to everyone so far that I'm, I'm the, uh, the very boring kind of like coach on the corner at the moment, <laughs> um, looking for some very skillful players um, to help <laughs> me beat the opposition. And, and I think uh, we've got a really wonderful team put together on the council. It's much better to have a prize to motivate them uh, instead of have someone tell them a horrible story to uh, catch up. I think that uh, we will make a good team. I sense it's going to be actually sensational. It's a marvellous idea. Nobody seems to have thought of it before. What put it in your mind? We've reached a tipping point with Earth, and over the next 10 years, there's a real decade of change. And if we don't get our act together over the next 10 years, by 2030, we've, it's too late. So for me, it felt like a really important moment where it was you know, really the future of humankind in the balance. And I think that I felt responsibility that I should be involved in that. And I felt, what could we do to add and progress this issue further for, for everyone's benefit? Well, in many ways, this is a family tradition, isn't it? I mean, I remember it was your grandfather, wasn't it, who was a, one of the founding figures of the World Wildlife Fund. You had to know what you were doing if you sat in a committee with your grandfather. I don't mind telling you. <laughs> he perhaps he knew. Oh, I knew, David. <laughs> I still know today. You have to know your detail. I think with the family, you get that generational hand on. And I think I've really picked up on the fact that my grandfather started, you know, caring a long time ago about the natural world. My father's spoken a lot and cares a lot about the environment. And so I feel this is the right moment to, to sort of 
push this prize as, as best we can to kind of really help tackle and cement what all the work that they've done over the years. The thing that strikes me is that time is short. I, I am well aware as, and in my travels in the environment, so I'm seeing problems that are right now and, and they are building. I mean, we really have to be getting onto, our, onto it as fast as we can, do we not? This next 10 years is the critical decade of change. We have to have made huge strides in repairing the planet before 2030, otherwise irreversible change, and that tipping point has happened. And so it really is, you know, time is, time is of the essence, which is why we believe this very ambitious global prize is the only way forward. I, I truly think that things are about to start to move. And, and uh, this sort of idea well, could be the spark, which is really going to give it the lift and the impetus to develop into something huge. Absolutely. I'm sure that's what you want. People like you, David, who have done an enormous amount of work in, 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 in concentrating people's minds on just how serious this problem is. You've done all the hard work and the heavy lifting, and I'm hoping this prize could really make a difference. Well, it's a great source of hope, and I hope it spreads around the world, and the people who you're, you hope you're inundated. <laughs> With, with wonderful suggestions. I hope so too.